I've been doing a lot of experimenting recently with my drum sound. Normally when I mix, I go for drums that are super punchy and way, way over the top. And so I was going through how I mix drums and I was trying to experiment with a few different non-traditional ways of really making the drums sound massive. And I found some really cool tricks and I wanted to share those with you today. And if you don't have any good ones or you don't know where to find some, I have a free downloadable guide in the description that contains all of my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. So if you need some of those tools to help follow along with this video today, by all means, go and grab your free copy of that. All right, this is the song we'll be working with. It's by a band called Eden Rose. This is called Moving On. So let's check out just the drum sound. Yeah, that's a freaking cowbell. All right, so that is basically stereotypical Bobby's drum mixing sound right there. The bigness that you're hearing from the drums usually comes from room samples or room mics from a drum kit. So if you don't have a pair of room mics when you're mixing a song, it's not the end of the world. What we can do is fake it using either reverb or we can use drum samples to help add some room back in and then we're gonna use some plugins to kind of make those samples sound larger than life. So this is the snare drum that we got originally. Nothing really special, right? So you notice it doesn't have like a lot of space. Normally you can get some space from having the overheads in the song. But that's not really helping it either, right? I, the drums don't sound big. So we, luckily for us, we do have a pair of these room mics. So let's bring those in as well and see if the snare sounds massive now. Still not really cutting it, right? So in this case, let's duplicate this snare track. Okay, we're just gonna make a copy of it. You can duplicate it here. And what we're gonna do is add samples on top of this snare track to kind of give it a little bit of space. I use Steven Slate Trigger to do all my drum sample replacement. Okay, and there's a lot of really good samples. A lot of the Steven Slate stuff sounds great. I'm really a big fan of Bogren Digital's snares and kick drums and all their drum samples. They just, I don't know, they just figured it out. It sounds really good. We're gonna try to find a sample that has just the room sound to it. So these are just like the room mics. Blend is a combination of the dry plus the wet, which is another good option. Like if this snare drum really isn't cutting it, if it's not strong enough, I might just grab a blend sample and then we can process the heck out of it on this track. But for this video, let's just focus on using the wet tracks or just the room mics on a snare sample. I'm really liking this one. So let's use that sample. It has a really nice width to it. It doesn't sound too bright. It doesn't sound too dark. It just feels good to me. So now we're gonna just replace this additional track with just this wet sample. Cool. Just to show you, this is what it sounded like before, right? It's the direct snare top mic. So we're gonna go 100% wet. So now we're adding a little bit of space to our, our snare drum, okay? So when we bring that snare top mic back, we play this together without it, with it. Okay, now we're getting a little bit of that sense of space, but that's not enough for me because I'm a nut and I wanna take things to another level always. So what I normally would do is slap on a really aggressive compressor here, um, something like an 1176, and I'm just gonna bend the needle if I could, okay? So what do I mean by that? I'm gonna take this, I like the bluey mode of it, and I'm really gonna turn this input up and just smash this thing with a ton of gain reduction. And I'm doing 20 to one, if I wanna feel fancy, I can click this all button and we'll just go for it. There we go. Bend that needle. You can hear the difference, right, if I bypass this?
it's basically extending the length of the room sample, okay? That's gonna make it feel bigger and more aggressive. Now, we, we have to do very carefully is get the attack and release timing right. So when the snare drum hits, we want it to rush in right after that initial attack, okay? So let's just adjust the attack and release settings. I really want you to hear how important it is to get the attack and release timings right, okay? So if we have a fast attack, meaning like close to zero milliseconds, it's almost like instantaneous on here. It sounds like this. And if we slow the attack down and open it up to make it more like 20 or 30 milliseconds. Okay, we're starting to get this weird like click and all this other sound to it. What's happening is, is that the initial sound of that room tone is, is starting to get through the compressor and then it clamps down. So we're getting this like loud sound and then it's really quiet and then the sound swells back in, okay? When we have the attack really, really fast in on this compressor, seven is the fastest setting for this. What's gonna happen is as soon as there's any room sound from that those drum samples, this compressor's already grabbing onto that sound and, and bringing it down and reducing the gain, okay? So nothing is sneaking by this compressor when we have it set this fast. The sound of a big spacious room doesn't have an immediate click, right? It doesn't have an immediate transient. The sound of the room has to is from a direct source that goes out and then reflects back into our ears. So we wanna model that in our plugin when we're setting this up for the room sounds. Okay, so fast attack, and then we can play with the release. Let's see what that does to the sound. So a very fast release in this case is gonna give us a really big in your face kind of room sound. When we slow the release back down and make it longer and longer, what that does is the compression holds on to the sound longer and longer, okay? So it's gonna keep it quieter for a longer period of time and then let it go back to zero. And so that's gonna create a little bit of this like pumping motion which in this case I think is actually a really good thing. But if you get too long in your release setting, then what ends up happening is you don't get a really big in your face effect. Okay, you're keeping the compression happening for too long and the room sound is already decayed and it's not really swelling in and, and it's not present and in your face. So we have a smaller sounding room. So you wanna find that sweet spot where it's really loud, aggressive in your face, and you're getting a little bit of this swelling and pumping motion that kind of goes with the beat of the song. So that's really aggressive. We have some cool pumping happening here. So somewhere between these two is where we'd want to set this, okay? So you almost want it like a rubber band. Like you hear the snap and then it comes flying back because that sound's reflecting off the walls. So that's one way you can make your drum sound really, really, really big. And you can do this for toms, you can do this for kick drums, you can do this for everything. But I tend to just be this over the top on my snare drum. Something that I've been doing that's brand new that I haven't done before is using this plugin called Smack Attack. Smack Attack is basically just a transient enhancer. Okay, so you can use any transient enhancer that you want. They all probably will do a similar thing. But the thing that I like about this one in particular is these different envelope shapes. This is working off two parts. You can uh, dial in the attack, okay, which most people would think they want to do for drums. But since we're working with room mics or the room sound, we don't really want to use the attack now. We don't want a punchy transient. We want the room to sound big. And so what this does is we can go to the sustain portion and we can turn this up. And what that does is after you have that initial hit, this Smack Attack plugin is gonna just ride the volume up and then decay it based on what these shapes look like. Instead of it sounding really compressed, okay, and, and having like all those artifacts and like the saturation, what you're getting now is a much cleaner sounding room sound, okay? Something that sounds a lot more natural, not so insane like how my drums typically sound. So I've been experimenting with this and getting some pretty cool results. Let me show you how I dial it in. So let's just hit play. Yeah, 
There you go. You can, <laughs> you can hear how insane it can be, right? Listen to that. Without it. With it. I mean, that's that's crazy, right? That's like a cannon almost. What we need to do is adjust the sensitivity so that it doesn't just run off like that. Okay, so you want to put these yellow lines a little bit below our transient to get the biggest effect. Okay, so if we lower it down here. If you go above the transient, that shape that it adds in is a lot more subtle. Okay, so it's not as obvious. Bring this down. It starts getting louder and louder. Then you start getting crazy when you start getting really low here. You also have the option to change the duration or how long it's gonna have that room be. Okay, so we can go really long. So you can see it's just stretching out the shape of this this envelope, which is insane. You would never want it to be that long, okay? So you can make it tight. So this is really gonna come down to the style of music and your tempo. So let me just compare these last two that we just did. Let's listen to what it sounds like with the compression. Okay, let's go back to the transient enhancer. All right, let's listen to what it sounds like in the context of the mix when we add in that track. All right, here we go. Let's start without anything. So they certainly have different feels, right? That 1176 sounds very much like this rubber band motion. It sounds like the drums are getting pushed back and then sucked forward. It sounds great in some genres, but not great in others. And that's kind of the problem I was running into. However, if you use something like Smack Attack or a transient enhancer to do this type of motion instead, now what you're getting is like a larger than life version of just the room sample. It sounds a lot more natural. It's a lot less back and forth movement and more of just like a big euphoric sound. It's also a lot cleaner and it keeps the frequencies less saturated if you're going for a lighter, airier kind of feel to it. And again, if you don't have a good sounding snare drum or something like that, all you need to do is find a free sample somewhere online. And if you need a good place to find some drum samples, I have some in that guide that's available for download in the description. So go and grab that. But this should certainly not keep you from making awesome sounding music. And something else you can experiment with is doing this same style of compression or using a transient enhancer in this way on your room tracks. You can get a really cool effect there and make your drums just sound absolutely monstrous. So let me know in the comments if you've ever played with a transient enhancer on your snare bus before. I know a lot of people use compressors this way, but I've never really seen a lot of people using the transient enhancer to do this type of movement. Or maybe you use some other tool. Whatever you do, just let me know in the comments. With that, I want to thank you so much for your time and attention today. My name is Bobby Bailo. I'm the Mixing and Mastering Engineer at Rayton Productions, and I hope to see you in another video.